now uh, we're conducting a little experiment this evening. We can cross live to Anne-Marie Tomczak, who's with three BBC journalists, the product of different education systems around the world, who are about to take on a few questions from the PISA test. So it's uh, back to school for our colleagues this evening, Anne-Marie. It is, Anita. I'm here in the world's newsroom. Now, behind me is where 27 different language services work. But we've come across the hallway to an area called the Collaboration Zone. And we've made this into a little bit of an examination hall today to put some of our BBC colleagues to the test. We've got Oleg from the Russian service, John Brain, a news correspondent, and Howard from the Chinese service here. Um, first, just to mention, to remind our viewers, um, China doesn't participate as a country itself, Howard, does it? But Shanghai and Hong Kong participate uh, in the test. As two cities, yeah. And yes. they did well? Well, uh, Shanghai got number one, but, uh, you know, what exactly are the, are the tests? And uh, we're still waiting to see it. Did that surprise you? No, uh, not really. Not really, because uh, I grew up in China when I, you know, many, many, many years ago. And uh, when I was in school, uh, every day you were expected to get full marks on every test. Your parents had the expectation, your grandparents, the whole family, even your neighbours expected you to do, do well. So that pressure is always there. Mm. And so I'm not quite surprised of mm -hmm. uh, you know, the findings today. So a lot of expectation and pressure on students. John, the UK didn't fare quite as well. It's, it's lagging behind some countries from other parts of the world like Asia. Uh, yes, very much so. And as we've been hearing in the reports through the day, a lot of the wailing and teeth gnashing about why this is that uh, Britain with its aspirations is really not even holding the position it had before but it's actually slipping down the rankings that's going to be of huge concern to the education secretary Michael Gove who's who's made such a campaign to raise standards and the suggestion is they may actually be falling but successive governments have said that education is a huge priority in Britain but, but have never been able to agree exactly what the answer is and how to initiate that improvement. Oleg, Russia, where did it fare? Well, the British should take heart because Russia is 34th and uh, no one actually makes a lot of fuss about this. The news is not that much of a news in Russia. Although everyone still expects their kids to do well, obviously every Russian kid goes to school, but somehow there is a feeling that good marks in school don't necessarily translate into success in life. Uh, there's always this strange gap and each family sort of solves it in its own way. Okay, well, we we're on to the subject of good marks in school. We've actually got a sample of some of those tests. So they're just here on this table. I'm going to hand them out to our contributors who kindly agreed to take part in our very own mini World's Newsroom exam. Reluctantly agreed. Re so reluctantly, so. might I say. <laughs> but uh, have a look at those guys and, and let me uh, hear your impressions. Throw a quick eye there. While they're having a look at that, I would just like to mention that Ireland actually ranked uh, in the top ten. It came in seventh place. So as an Irish person, I'm very pleased by that. Um, but uh, guys, have you had a chance to look? You're going to go and do the test? No, oh, we have to now. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> while they're taking the test, we'll hand back to you um, uh, from the World's Newsroom here. But do come back to us to find out how they got on. Yes, uh, we're very much looking forward to uh, seeing the results there. Anne-Marie Tomczak, thank you very much.